Hi guys! Today we're going to talk about plants once again and last time we finished off with talking about stems uh, we're still going to talk about stems a little bit more and then we're going to talk about trees and trees are also plants remember that so let's talk about that remember last time we talked about the stems the stems give strength and support and also they have vascular bundles and that transport food and uh, you know from the leaves and the food from the leaves go to the roots and also of course to the other leaves and to the flowers and the food also goes to the roots like i said and the roots then pick up minerals and water and they transport that through vascular bundles to the leaves and the flowers again so it's kind of like two ways of going into different types of tubes and we'll talk about that later okay so um moving on to the stem okay so if you look in your book on page 154 uh, there's a figure 6.15 and if you grab that and look it up you know which uh, names we have for the plants so you know you have a plant over here we have a plant in the picture uh, what are we talking about so the first one what is that that is the terminal bud now the terminal bud is of course the place where the plant grows it grows new pieces of stem and new leaves so way up on the plant over here it's the terminal bud and then in between so when you have a plant leaf and it's right there it's hard to see i guess but that thing right there is called the auxiliary bud and the auxiliary bud is right where a leaf is at okay so and then we have of course the leaf then we have the internode now the internode is the space between two leaves so here we have one leaf here we have the second leaf and in between here so that piece between the two leaves is called an internode and that's because of the node and the node is the place where the uh, leaf attaches to the stem so that is a node over there so there's two nodes and in between the nodes you have the internode and on top of the node you have the auxiliary bud where new side branches and new leaves can sprout and then of course we have the terminal bud okay so plants have two types of stems woody stems herbaceous stems uh, okay so uh, what is a woody stem what is a herbaceous stem so for instance here uh, this is a pancake plant uh, it's a tiny baby plant I'm still trying to grow it but it has a woody stem now the woody stem uh, if I stop giving this plant water then the leaves will of course wilt they will hang but the stem will stay straight up so that will be a woody plant okay now you probably have sometimes uh, seen tulips in a vase maybe you've given your mom or dad some tulips and then if you don't water the tulips the leaves the plant well the whole plant not just the leaves but the whole plant will start to hang and that's because there's no wood in the stem it's only water that keeps the stem upright so with herbaceous plants like tulips um, when there's no water then there's no more support and the whole stem sort of droops whereas in a woody plant if you don't give it water then only the leaves will wilt will hang but the stem stays straight up because the wood gives it support and strength okay so in summary a herbaceous plant gets its strength from water and it's often a green stem okay and then uh the woody plant gets the strength from wood and it's always a brown stem well, very often like trees all have woody plants uh, woody stems and of course shrubs bushes and roses they're all the ones with woody stems okay now talking about woody stems trees have stems huge stems and if you have ever seen a tree cut open uh, through the stem you have probably seen the annual rings the year rings the yaringa so the annual rings uh, they they grow from the inside out so this is how skinny the tree was when it was still a very young tree and then 
every year it was growing new rings and here you can see that it shows this is year one this is year two year three this is year four then year five year six year seven is this one year eight and so forth so you can see that this tree is 24 years old and then it was cut down okay so we need to talk about annual rings and uh, you can also read about it on pages 156 and 157 of your textbook it's very important you understand what's going on here okay so um let's dive into it first of all let's observe observe really really well first of all we see um, that a ring actually contains two rings now watch carefully a ring contains two rings it contains a lighter part and then a darker part so and then we have a lighter part and a darker part a lighter part and a darker part and one light part and one dark part together make an annual ring okay so it's it's not like this is just simply the edge of a year ring but it's actually part of the whole ring but in the beginning of the year the plant makes light um, cells light area here and then at the end of the growth here it makes darker cells and the cells are very close together okay and so that was what makes the ring a little bit darker at the end so uh, let's talk about it a little bit more so here you can see the same tree over here and the tree uh, has now a strip of it uh, open so this is a strip from you can see it in the slide here this little strip is magnified okay and then a little strip in the magnification is magnified again so let's look at the bigger strip here first here's the center the center is called the pith and that is of course the when the baby tree was still very young and skinny and then you have all those year rings, growth rings, annual rings. And then on the outside, we have the bark. The bark is the schorsch. Okay, so first of all, uh, let's look at these year rings. And as you can see, some of these year rings are very wide, like this one is extremely wide. And some year rings are very kind of narrow. Now, why is it like that? Well, because when a tree has uh, very good growth conditions, because it's uh, a good year with lots of rain, especially lots of rain, then the tree really likes that, and it starts making lots of cells. And so it will grow an enormous amount, make a very thick ring, and it really grows a lot that year. So it says good growing conditions but sometimes we have years where we, it's dry like this year and last year and the year after after this one so the the past three years including this one it was very dry and so we call this harsh growing conditions not so much water not so much rain and so the tree grows only a little bit and uh, as you can see it then makes a smaller skinnier annual ring so one annual ring is uh, a light part and a dark part, part together. So I repeat, an annual ring is a light part plus a dark part. Now let's look at this little strip of one annual ring. As you can see, it has a light part and a dark part. And the light part is called early wood. And as you can see, it contains cells, because plants, of course, are made of cells. And when the plant grows, it makes more and more cells. But the cells here are kind of large, and they're big and fat, because there was, uh, it was still the spring, it was early in the year. There was still moisture, water in the soil, uh, probably it was raining uh, uh, a little bit more, and so the cells here could grow thick and fat. And that's why we call it early wood. It's early in the year, there's lots of moisture, lots of rain, lots of water. But then late wood, which is in the summer, it's later in the year, it's dry conditions. So then we have less water in the soil, and that means that the cells grow tinier and they're smaller and because of the, because they are tinier and smaller they are packed closer together and it makes a darker area in the ring 
Okay, so that's late wood. Uh, so we have early wood in spring and late wood in summer. Now, what about autumn and winter? Now, autumn and winter, the tree doesn't really grow as much anymore. What the tree does, it sort of starts to slow down everything because most trees also will lose their leaves. And so when you lose your leaves as a tree, you cannot make any more food through photosynthesis, no more sugars, no more glucose. And so growth kind of stops. And, you know, the tree has uh, saved lots of food in its uh, roots so it will survive the autumn and the winter and then when spring comes around and there's coming lots of rain and it's nice and warm again it's kind of warmer than in winter then the cells start growing another ring starting out with early wood lots of big cells and ending in summer with the late wood or the darker area of the ring so we only have a spring and a summer area in one annual ring. And then in the autumn and the winter, we have no more of those growth anymore. So last picture here. Um, so remember, we talked about those vascular bundles. There are two types, the vascular bundles going from the root to the leaves and the flower that contain the minerals and the uh, uh, water. That is called the xylene. You can talk, you can see that in your book as well. Xylene, you spell it with an X, but you don't pronounce the X. You just say xylene. Okay, so the xylene contains the water. And the xylene is all over this area in the center area of the tree. And then the phloem, the phloem is, here you can see the word phloem, and here the word xylene. Xylem is in the center where water is transported up the tree or up the plant. And phloem is are the vascular bundles that go from the leaves down to the roots and from the leaves up to the rest of the uh, tree if it's necessary. So, but the phloem is way at the outside. It's just a tiny little area. So whereas xylem is all over the place inside the tree, lots of vascular bundles with water, there's only one small area on the outside of the tree, right beneath the bark. So if you have the bark here, right beneath here, there is phloem. And phloem, of course, contains the food in the tubes, right? Food from the plant. Now, sometimes people cut into the bark. And if they cut into the bark, then the phloem um, comes out. And the phloem cannot be transported anymore up the tree and anywhere else. If you do that for just a tiny little part, that's okay, because the rest of the tree will still have its phloem and will still be able to transport food from the leaves way up to the rest of the tree. But if you make a ring, a cutting of a ring around the tree bark all the way deep into the phloem, you sort of stop and you cut the phloem vascular bundles, then no more food can go up the tree to the other leaves and no more food can go down, especially into the roots. What happens then? The tree will die. And this is what a uh, ringing is, what uh, uh, lumberjacks, houthockers, when they want to cut off, cut the tree, then usually they just ring it and then the tree will slowly die uh, instead of having to cut it all uh, at once. And that gives the life in the tree, like the, the insects and the birds, a bit of time to kind of stay there for a little while longer. Until at the uh, end of the uh, growing season, the birds are gone, the insects are gone, and then the tree can, uh, you know, be easily cut down. So remember, xylem for water, from the roots to the leaves, water and minerals, and phloem from the leaves to the rest of the tree, and from the leaves to the roots containing food. Okay, that was it for today. This was about stems. Next time we'll talk about leaves. Have a very nice day, do your homework, and see you next time. Bye.